Well, we had a tree. And I don't mean a Christmas tree. I mean a fucking tree fell down and almost destroyed all my shit. You had the you had a Yule log miracle is what you had. <laughs> so for those of you didn't kill you. For those of you who are catching this on the uh, on the YouTube and have been following my Twitter, um December 23rd, this past Saturday, um around 4:20 4:30ish there was a very large noise. Big bada boom. And if you live in suburbia, you're not accustomed to large noises randomly. Not really, no. That's normally a, a tell that something has gone wrong. Um, About 20 feet of a 40-foot tree fell in my driveway. There was no wind, no lightning, no no It just it just gave in. It just it it just fuck it. And it fell in my driveway. Um my garbage cans are are done. It They're, like fucking impaled one. Yeah, it, it actually the the lid of the recycling bin, it actually drove a, a log this big around through the lid and into the ground about three quarters of a foot. It fucking smote your recycling bin. <laughs> yeah, th there was one of them that was like crumpled into a ball, which led me to the question, how does one throw away a trash can? I, that's a really good question. So and I look forward to the answer. It, it was all crumpled up. Um, it knocked the side view mirror off my truck. It's I just had brand new fencing installed in... in uh, yeah, that got fucked up. Um... But but luckily, nobody was hurt. That was it. No buildings got smashed in. There were two vehicles in the driveway. Neither of them were damaged, you know, to to nightmarish degree. Your other girlfriend's car wasn't there. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, we were we were very lucky. Your other girlfriend. I'm sorry, your girlfriend. I, meant, I started to say the other see car. Everyone's going to see my Darth Vader sweater. So <laughs> have it on. And then your girlfriend's car. Get away with the red hand. Oh, hi. No. Yeah, she uh she was working yeah. she was working late. Had she been at home at when she was supposed to be home, which is about three o'clock, um, she would have no car now. Mm -hmm. And she may not be here either. Yeah. And we like that you're here. Because so... that, that landed right where I parked. <sighs> and it fell while I was driving home. And I usually, I'm usually when I get home, like, I have to turn off Google Maps, and I, like, mess with my phone a little, and, yeah. So you're, like, in the car for a few more minutes, yeah. And, of course, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Tara, because I don't have oh, the thing sorry. on, but, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, but, yeah. yeah, I do that. I sit and, like, finish listening to the song that's playing, you know, whatever, and. Yep. So... I'm very glad that nobody got flattened. Yeah, I of all the possible places, 20 feet of wood could have just landed randomly. This was I the really, best. My favorite part is that it fucking smote your recycling bin lid. Yeah. It was like, fuck this piece of plastic in particular. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me try I I'll 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 show yeah. I got to I got to show people the pictures. I got to. I know people are waiting for the stupid shit, but this is just how often does half a tree land in, in your yard? I mean... Not often. It's too good. Let's see. Where, where is... Yeah, yeah. Here, here's the picture. I'll put this up over here for everybody to see. Yeah, this... This... Yeah, she's talking about that hunk down there at, at the recycling bin can, the blue one. No bueno. No bueno. No bueno. And also, this this is what was left of the main trash can. Like, it was crumpled. Like, folded in on itself. It was How crumpled like a beer can. Yeah. How does that even happen? Because. And I don't, I don't know how you dispose of that. I don't know. Because look, that, that, that's half of the tree. And there is the other half of the tree, just all smashed every fucking thing. I would say it's a safe bet the rest of that tree's gonna have to go. Yeah. 
It's not going anywhere right this particular minute. Yeah. I, oh no, I don't, you should go out right now and cut it down. We'll wait. I don't have a, I have to, I have to call the kid down the street, which here, this is a weird little thing. There's a kid lives down the street who takes care of my, my yard, my lawn for me. I pay him for it. His name is Grady too. <laughs> so there's a kid down the street with a chainsaw named Grady who's going to come and the funny thing is like you said all your neighbors came to like check on you and say stupid stuff and I'm picturing something like this happening in Jersey and legit unless your tree fell on your neighbor's shit I don't think anybody would come fucking check on you well like, it, it wasn't that they were coming to check on me it was that it was the most interesting thing happening <laughs> Like, people here, it's like, mind your own fucking business. Don't get involved in shit. So, like, I think people will be looking out their windows, but they wouldn't come to, like, talk to you about it unless your tree murdered their cock. Well, this this is suburbia. In, this is southern suburbia. Nothing yeah. happens. Northern suburbia is very different. When something happens here, it's like, this is free entertainment. So a tree came down, and... Well, that, that sure is a tree. Sure was. Half a fucking... Just... Boom. Didn't even smash the uh, the storage shed. I was like, of all the, and of all the things that could have gotten knocked off my car, the only thing less expensive would have been the antenna. But like the adventures with this house, I know. Like you, I know, you might do well in the new year to invest in a Winchester like expert. Just to expunge whatever dark energy. <laughs> you released from that freezer uh, it's probably it's probably it all started when i opened the, yeah the freezer was what did it all right well now that's all done let's get the intro going because stupid stops for no man stupid stops for no holiday each the week jesus no match for stupid each week Catherine and the Radio Tenor our audience go out on the, on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And we're going to start with, with an update from probably my favorite story over the years. The Goat. <gasps> the Goat! So, for those of you just joining us for the first time who have not been with us over the years, in the town of Gobel, I think I'm saying that right, Gobel, Sweden, um, every year they erect a giant goat, a giant straw goat. It's a tradition. It started in 1966. And every year they attempt to to keep this 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 goat, this, this large till Christmas. Till Christ it's like Christmas thing for some reason yes and every year people try to burn it down because fuck it it has since 1966 been burned down more often than it has survived and, and i think pretty much every year we've been on the air that we've been aware of the goat the goat has burned yeah, um, let's just just give you some of these these wild stories about this. Um, let's see. Uh, what was the one? Um, because th some of the shit that's going on around this has been nuts. Uh, a visitor from Ohio uh, was uh, arrested from you. Know, the United States was arrested for burning the goat. What happened was some people who lived in the town convinced him this was the tradition. <laughs> so they got, and he got arrested, and it was, yeah. So they, they tricked an American into burning the goat down. Um, 2005, unknown vandals dressed as Santa and the gingerbread man <laughs> burned it down by shooting flaming arrows. At the wow. goat. It's fucking hardcore. <laughs> um, December 2009, multiple attempts were made by multiple people to burn the goat down. And that year, they put online webcams to monitor the goat to see if people were trying to, to, 
to burn it down. The webcams got denial of service. They hacked the goat webcams so they could burn it down. We don't need no Christmas. Let the motherfucker burn. Um, the, the, last year, the 2016 was even was just even worse. It didn't make it a day. It lasted right. November 26th. It went up November 27th. It was burned down and a local high school built a new one, a small one. That one got hit by a car. <laughs> so this has just been this strange, bizarre little yeah. war Ongoing saga of burning down the goat or not burning down the goat. Every, every year since 1966 has just been a thing going on in Sweden. Well, this year, ladies and gentlemen, the goat made it to Christmas Day. The goat survived. And that is how I know that this will be the last Christmas on this earth. <laughs> Repent your sins. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> do whatever weird, kinky shit you've always wanted to do. <laughs> because this will be our last Christmas. The goat has survived. <laughs> Shit's all fucked up. We've had the celebrity rapture. What do you think? cannot save us. What do you think? Bowie, it's like Bowie was holding it all together. We didn't realize that at the time. What you thought this was like some cabin in the woods shit? The goat must burn, or all of Earth will be destroyed. Kinda. And Bowie was holding everything together, <sighs> and the goat's like the last fucking seal. We're done for. It's over. I don't know. I'm happy. I am happy the goat survived. Given all the horrible shit that has happened this year, I'm like, <laughs> just just leave the goat alone. That's your little nice nice thing. That's yeah. the really nice thing that happened this year. Well, you know what? Two, 2017 was a fucking dumpster fire outside of Taco Bell, but the goat made it. Uh, you know, just give me this. Just just give. <laughs> I was okay. Uh, you know what? I I am I am a, a, an American. I take pleasure in seeing things burn just as much as the next American. But you know, this year I was like, "Come on, let him have the goat." Just 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 let the goat live. We've so, all had a real hard year. It's it's you know I I and the security they put around this. They have security guards, surveillance cameras, fences. <laughs> Just it's so, certainly better than most politicians. Just for a straw goat. Yeah. <laughs> and you're and here. That begs the obvious question: Stop making it out of straw. You know what disappoints me? <laughs> that no one has thus far showed up to burn the goat dressed as a big bad wolf, <laughs> with like a flamethrower where they take a deep breath and then shoot. Like, <laughs> doesn't that seem obvious to you? Oh, it does. It does. That's just me. Well, so... Uh, I guess if it was a straw pig. So, you know, I, I, I'm i hesitant to talk about Santa on this show because I know small children watch it. Which you should not. Yeah, why are you letting your this kids watch this? This show is a shortcut to the fucking naughty list. Okay? Yes. I'm, I'm hesitant, but... I, you know, I, I like the fact that, that kids, you know, I like the whole Santa Claus thing. I dig it. I dig it. This, however, is a new twist. Their hearts were in the right place, I think. But um, the rest of them is in jail now. Elderly couples stopped in Nebraska with 60 Pounds of weed oh. for Christmas presents. I didn't know the North Pole was in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Sheriff's deputies in York County, Nebraska, stopped a pickup truck on Tuesday when they noticed it driving over the center line and the driver failing to signal. During the stops, deputies noticed a strong smell of raw marijuana. Patrick Duran, 80, and Barbara Duran, 83, said they were from Northern California and were en route to Boston and Vermont. Deputies asked the driver, Patrick Buren, about the odor. He admitted to having contraband in the truck and consented to search the vehicle. Jiren's now faced felony charges of possession of marijuana with the intent to deliver and no drug tax stamp. 
Okay. Look Oops. at the cops standing next to this pile. It's... They always do this. They always do the we we got these drugs picture. But they're all like geared up. And I know cops just dress like that, but it's just kind of a surreal picture of these dudes all geared up after busting grandma and grandma with a bunch of fucking plants. I know! I know! And some of it is actually in a cheese balls tub? It is! It <laughs> is! That is, in fact, that, that, lo that pic in the lower left of the picture there, that is, in fact, marijuana in a cheese balls tub. I guess they ran out of Ziplocs? The dog looks happy. They got, they got all the munchies. Now look, I know we have our our drug laws in America are undergoing a bit of a shift, but right now, and this is still in contention, that federal law about drugs and and right. the local law about drugs. I know some places are perfectly cool with it. Some places aren't. Are not. So when you drive from one part of the country. To another, you're crossing lines. Those are called state lines, and they have different laws in each of the... So, you know, probably this was not your best plan. But, like, what would be the best way to transport your 60 pounds of weed? You could FedEx. 3,000 miles. Because you, you can't ship it. You can, Yes, you can. Really? You could FedEx that shit. You're not supposed to. Wouldn't... Yeah, but wouldn't that, wouldn't that smell? No, you pack it in coffee. Oh. Well, look at you. <laughs> I know a thing or three about a thing or three. No, I mean, you're not supposed to ship this stuff. But people ship this stuff. But do you think that's the smarter plan? Then, you know, if you could anonymously drop it off at a FedEx location with no return address, or... Yeah going to know where it's going. They're going to know where it's going, sure. But like then you're allowing them to track its progress, literally. <laughs> well, they're going to know where it's going, but the people at the other end can say, hey, I've never heard, I didn't ask for no weed, and you're not connected to it, and you're not sitting in the truck with 60 pounds of it in a cheese <laughs> ball in a cheese ball. That's, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. That is a lot of pot, yes. Like, I don't really have a good concept of how much pot is a little pot but 60 pounds of anything is a lot loki weighs 60 pounds that's your dog in pot <laughs> <laughs> like yes. if instead of a straw goat for christmas you built a weed loki <laughs> <laughs> then you would definitely burn that yeah yeah would definitely get burned down yeah Oh, well, there's another, um, this, this is a, a tradition in the Midwest in, in winter, and I don't understand why. Driving on frozen lakes. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't get it. It's a thing people do. When the lakes freeze, they try to drive over them. So you can lose your car and die? No, it's kind of a hey. Hold my beer while I do this. There just really is nothing to do where you come from. Is there? <laughs> There's just fuck all to actually do. Yeah, you go to the skeeter hole, get your truck, like, drive it out onto the pond. Have y'all looked into movies? <laughs> <laughs> or like books? <laughs> well, this one is just getting people to read or have a TV. This yeah. one is particularly <laughs> wonderful because of the name of the lake. I think this. Like, fuck your Mazda? S SUV goes through ice on Lake Butt de Moor. <laughs> the butt of death. <laughs> the death butt. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what we called you in French after you had that Hormel chili that time. Yeah. <laughs> Winnebago County, Wisconsin. The Winnebago County Sheriff's Office says... Early ice is unsafe and unforgiving after an SUV broke through the ice on Lake Butte de Moor Tuesday afternoon. The SUV ended up with its front wheels completely submerged. Yep, he said the driver's okay, gave permission to use photos of the mishap as a warning to other ice motorists. 
to use extreme caution. How about how about no ice motorists? Yeah. Why are that was you... a plot point in American Gods. The little town yes. in Wisconsin. They that made he... they made a bet. That... Yeah, there's it was like the town tradition every year they'd roll an old car out onto the center of the frozen lake and everyone in the town would bet on what which day it would thaw and the car would sink. I I you would I'm still Guess I'm, what should be the title this week. I'm, yeah, yeah. Oh, come all ye death but it's death but frozen and unforgiving. I just what why you could not pay me to drive on frozen on a frozen lake. I wouldn't lake. Even walk on a frozen lake. No, let alone bring two thousand pounds of fucking fiberglass and shit onto it. Like, I don't even get those dudes that ice fish because that seems risky to me. They built. Like, let's the... go out on a frozen body of water and then apply concussive force to it. And not only that, they and built then spend the day there. They build like little huts out yeah. little buildings like and they had a lot of weight and concussive force to this frozen water they put little franklin stoves in those damn things yeah like that doesn't seem safe to me and that's ice like this thick yeah like are the fish that fucking good i doubt it well, I guess. are there special unicorn fish I... <laughs> they only come out when the lake is frozen just don't don't drive on the fucking ice. Uh, don't drive on Lake Death Butt. Like, do those don't fish do... blow you from saving them from the frozen lake? Like, I don't know what the pe appeal is. Uh, don't but do... I've always lived in civilization, so. Oh, uh, here and here is another. You know what? I'm almost being back in Charleston. I'm almost kind of missing. Illinois. Everyone's actually. Everyone in the chat is like, actually, it's a butte. And that usually means a hill. We know. It's a butt. Shut up. We know. It's de It's like death butt. We're aware. It's death butt. Move it's on. It's death butt. It's fucking Christmas. Give us this one. It's, give us the death butt. Okay. Um. Something. I I actually kind of miss snow in Illinois. I actually I like I like living where it snowed. But of course they have to plow the roads. This is a thing. Yeah. And if you've ever if you've ever seen a snowplow, you probably have. You're in New Jersey. Oh, so yeah. have, they're giant fuck off vehicles. They, they, My sister got hit by one once. The, the, she was at a toll booth coming down from upstate New York, north of the wall. And the she was in, I forget what she was even driving, like an Oldsmobile or something. And this And Tara just locked up. Am I here? Can you hear me or what? You locked up there for a second. She she was fine. The plow lost control on the road and hit and hit her car. Luckily, she was fine, but her car was totally fucked up. I just I oh oh all sorts of shit went out. Okay, we're back. Ah, stupid internet tonight. But yeah, it's it's there. These are not small vehicles. They are they are mean giant mean mean vehicles so this i do not understand who in there especially we were talking about big giant fuck off vehicles and super slippery road who would do this lowell oh, michigan what? digging out of a snowstorm sucks everyone in michigan feels your pain but that doesn't mean you should take it out on snow plows trying to clear public roads that's the message from the Lowell Police Department, which posted a somewhat graphic message on its Facebook page Monday, December 18th. People, 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 the message reads. So the police are already done with them, you can tell. Yeah. Please do not walk out in front of a city snowplow with your shovel, challenging our drivers not to plow in your driveway. No. 26,000 pounds of metal and salt does not stop on a dime. If the truck doesn't crush and kill you immediately, the blade will dismember your body and you'll bleed out before any help arrives. It will be horrible. So this apparently is what people are like. And I understand why people are upset, because when the snow plows go by, the, the snow plows are required to plow city streets. Right. Your driveway is not a city street. Right. So if the plow goes by and it blasts a whole bunch of snow into your driveway... 
That's your problem, not the plow's problem. Usually right. what it does, it doesn't <clears throat> blast it evenly. It creates a nice three to four foot high snow drift right. at the end of your driveway. You get a little miniature wall from Westeros at the end of your driveway. And if you don't get to it right away, it freezes and it becomes a real pain in the dick. But that's fucking life, man. Yeah, you have to go out. You have to. That is, you live you in. You don't go out and goddamn Mad Max the plow driver. <laughs> Hey, not plowing your own in front of me, Jerry West. It's not gonna work. <laughs> You're not getting off. Fucking murdered. My dad drove a plow every you winter. You shall not plow. No. <laughs> You're going to lose. Trucks, trucks will win. And also, if they don't plow, you're gonna be pissed that they didn't plow because then you can't drive down your street, you fucking moron. Yes. Like, what do you want them to do? It's just. You want to just not go anywhere for the rest of the winter? Did you buy that much bread and milk? I just love how the police. It's happened enough. The police have had to tell people stop trying to fight the plows. And, like, you want to look at these people and be like, listen, <clears throat> you can't stop your fucking Prius on this shit. And that weighs about 10 pounds. <laughs> fucking plow weighs 26,000 pounds. How do you think it's going to go? <laughs> I can make fun of the Prius because I drive a Honda Fit and that weighs about 8 pounds. <laughs> keep, keep in mind, people in Florida had to be warned not to shoot their guns at a hurricane, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's here's another thing that's been going on this holiday season. People have been sending presents, and with with most with Amazon, they they don't normally put stuff in your mailbox. They put it on your front door. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, some jackass comes along to steal your fucking gifts off your front porch. Has happened to me before. It does suck. But so now that we live in Stepford, it's not really a problem. So ever, I get that it sucks. I get that it's not fun. And, and, you know, Amazon even has a solution for this. They've got this little lockbox thing you can buy to have installed at your house. Amazon also wants you to just let their people come in. That's not a good solution. That's a bad no, solution. But they just want you to let the Amazon driver come into your fucking house. Well, one so guy, you. one guy in Tacoma, Washington, had what he decided was an even better idea for dealing with this. A fake package rigged with explosives. Oh Ooh. my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> the more time Jerome uh, Barrow spent he, to keep people from swiping packages off his front porch. I think that's actually porch. Jeremy. Jeremy? That's Jeremy? I okay. think that's a stupid fucking spelling of Jeremy. <laughs> the more time and money. <laughs> Jeremy, J-A-I-R-E-M-E. -E, the more time money Jeremy Barrow spent to keep people from swiping packages off his front porch, the angrier he got. He showed police in Tacoma a crystal clear surveillance video of porch pirates strolling into his front yard, making off with what he could only assume were Jeep parts and electronics he paid for. There were never any arrests. He grew more incensed, and he realized he wanted more uh, than identities or charges or even the stuff in the boxes. He wanted revenge. Um... Although Barrow has been tinkering with devices for nearly a year, interest has peaked this month. Um, Barrow's concept... Wait, this is a product? Yeah. Barrow's concept for alleviating the anxiety is both simple and devious. If a word can be used to describe getting back at someone trying to whip you off, the nondescript dummy box is placed in plain sight. When an unsuspecting thief lifts it, a 12-gauge shotgun blank goes off. <laughs> no. Funny. No, Dan. No, Dan. No. <laughs> what the actual fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know who you married. <laughs> like, if it exploded glitter on you, that shit would be funny. <laughs> He's trying like, to pat you. Ex if, if a cloud of glitter exploded all over you, that would be funny. Or like pigment, so your face was blue for a week. Yeah, I get the clip. That would be funny. He's trying to patent the blank box and has built a website, cashing in his savings and going all in. Oh my God. He 
says he says he sold about 50 dummy boxes and has 477 pre-orders as of Monday. Wow. This is a fucked up country, man. <laughs> Just you know, you know what else you could do? You could get one of those big weatherproof boxes to put on your front step so people can't see your packages. Mm -hmm. Because at our old place, we did have a couple packages stolen. And that's what we were going to do before we moved. Just get one of those big weatherproof boxes. Tell you Dan is Googling boxes. for it. Dan is Googling for it. I see him. You're not buying that. No. He's... No, I was actually replying. I was replying to Mike. Um, uh huh. I, I have thought of this before when I lived in St. Louis because uh -huh. I had like three or four packages a year get stolen. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, I thought of rigging them with explosives. Look, anything, <laughs> any. How is that reasonable? Anything explosives related can catch fire. Yeah. You... A blank killed Brandon Lee. Well. It wasn't a blank, but it was supposed to be. Yeah. But and still. That's the point. An explosion is still that's that's a potential fire, and if you start, mm -hmm. a, if you can, I yeah, they won't steal your packages anymore if they're burned alive. Sure, or they have no fingers. Yeah, but guess who's liable for that shit? Oh, this is such a bad idea. Dan could make a way better explosive blast. Don't encourage him. <laughs> and also, I love that that he has put his life savings into this. Potentially the lawsuits. That you is idiot. Legal business plan. There's no way that holds up. You idiot. The lawsuits. At the very least, like that's that's assault. Because you can verbally assault someone. Like that's or what is it? There's something like making a threat. Like there's no way that stands up legally. I mean, it's it's. You, yeah, there's, we have like self defense on you, but you do not, you cannot hurt someone in America. You can defend your life. You cannot shoot someone in defense, of, you cannot harm someone in defense of your property. In Texas, you can. Not That's going to Texas. Not, not going to Texas. In Texas, you can shoot someone on your property for just about anything. Well, that's, well, okay, but yeah, that's like the national, that's like the, the state pastime issue. Yeah. Our last story this week, Jesus Christ. Okay. You know how lots of people... Happy birthday, Jesus Christ. You know how lots of people are all for animal rights, but then there's PETA? Yeah. I'm we all... We thousands of animals every week, but then yell at you that you should be vegan? I am all for women's rights, but then there's these people. Doing the stupidest possible thing. I I can't even. This is this is sort of like the PETA of feminism right here. Topless feminist activist tries to snatch Jesus statue from Vatican crib. Okay. Topless activist from the feminist group Femin tried to snatch the statue of the baby Jesus. From the nativity scene in St. Peter's Square on Monday. Was stopped by police as she grabbed it. Reuters photographer said the woman jumped over the guardrails, rushed onto the larger-than-life nativity scene, shouting, God is a woman. She had the same slogan painted on her bare back. Vatican gendarme stopped her from taking the statue, and she was detained. It said it happened about two hours before Pope Francis delivered his Christmas message. What the fuck is... What the fuck? What was that going to accomplish? Yes! Hey, the reason why I included the PETA uh, thing... Do you remember the sea kittens bullshit? Yeah. When they tried to... Don't call them fish. Call them sea kittens. Then people won't eat them. And... the, the... What was this? Where... <sighs> really? Because even if God is a woman, historically, there was a Jesus, and he was a dude. Yeah, whether he was the son of God, that's something the whether Jewish, he was the Muslims, all the, stuff the, the Bible Christians. Says, historians agree that there was a person 
who was called Jesus Christ and that he was a dude. I mean, if someone came up to it as like, God is a woman, that may be, that may be. Okay. However, but she's probably not very proud of you right now. Yeah. Also, the Vatican? That's a technically their own fucking country. That's a good way to die. You're not under Roman law. You're not under Italian law. You're under Vatican law. And they can do what the fuck ever they want to you because they are sovereign territory. <clears throat> they have their own police force. Their head of state is the Pope. They don't answer to fucking anybody. And, and so good luck ever seeing the outside of the Vatican again. And just like PETA, just like PETA, all you have accomplished is getting your group's name in the paper, and everyone is associating you with idiots. Yeah. yeah. You you have not helped the cause of animal rights. You, I mean, what the fuck? You sue in a poor photographer because a monkey took a picture with his, his equipment. Yeah. And you're trying to sue the photographer on behalf of the monkey. Right. All you're doing is making us think you're fucking assholes. Yeah, I really want... What was the point of... Like what? What? What were you trying to accomplish here? Just publicity, which it worked. We know you now. You're idiots. Okay. Is the chat going that shit on feminism? Yeah. Okay, we'll stop that. You fucking assholes. Yeah. Because, like, here's the same thing. I am all for animal rights. I cannot fucking stand PETA. You have to learn to defend. Yeah. Just because someone says they're on your side does not mean they're not an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'm feminist as fuck. Yeah. I'm not fucking with the Vatican. And yes, Pope Francis is pretty cool. He's probably not going to let them throw her in a hole. But I'm not fucking with the Vatican. I'm not fucking up anybody's Christmas unless it there's a really good reason. And Christmas exists is not a really good reason. And no like, yes, I know we stole all the good shit from Yule and Solstice and just slap Jesus's name on it to convert the pagans. I know. And nobody who has ever in the history of ever stolen a baby Jesus from a nativity has ever had a good goddamn reason for it. Unless they were a really cute cat and wanted to sleep there. Because that happens actually all the time and people <laughs> then do agree that it's adorable. But if you're not a cute cat, leave the baby Jesus alone. All right, so only cats have a good reason to steal the bad baby Jesus from no one else. No one, especially the no one Vatican. Else. Not a good look. Just, just. And let... I'm not saying the Catholic Church isn't fucked up because they are. Yeah, they are. But you're not fixing that. No. By doing this. No, you're just, you're. It's a net negative. You have fixed nothing and you have made an asshole of yourself. Because it, you know what? I am an SJW like nobody's business. And even I'm sitting here going, you fucking idiots. No. no. You fucking idiots. So yeah, that that's the first thing we've learned this week is th there's never a good reason. Unless you're a cat, there's never a good reason to steal the baby Jesus. Cats get a pass because they're cats. And that looks like a comfy place to sleep. Leave the baby Jesus alone. Otherwise, leave him alone. I mean, I have had some stupid ideas about wouldn't it be fun? When I was younger, I'd be like, wouldn't it be funny if I fucked with this church display and I didn't do it and I'm glad I didn't do it because I would have been in jail. I've told you about my house at Christmas when I was a kid, right? We lived in what my friends affectionately called the Jesus house because my parents were not fucking around Catholic. So we all had to wear little keep Christ and Christmas pins on our coats. And then in our front window, in the front picture window, we had a huge banner that said, Jesus is the reason for the season. With a spotlight on it. You could read it from the street. It was that big. So we were the Jesus house. So you didn't fuck with that stuff when you were a Dina Han. Because we took it pretty serious. So. Yeah. <laughs> the Jesus house. We were the Jesus house. We've learned this week that um, as a way to keep people from stealing your packages, explosives are probably not a good idea. Maybe maybe proportionate response instead of blowing them the fuck up. Yeah. Put one of those 
those fucking dye packs that the stores have on it so their hands turn blue shit i would yeah that'd be great or like you said glitter because as right i I, who i don't know who originally said it but they were brilliant glitter is the herpes of craft supplies it is it's not going away it's never going away till next christmas yep Peggy got into my ornaments, and she's been sparkly for the last two hours. And I don't really know what to do about it. Bath. Somebody needs a bath. I know, and we've never attempted that. And Merry Christmas! We've learned that uh, you can't fight a snowplow with a shovel. You're going to lose. You're going to lose that one. We've discovered Lake Butt de Moore. We've discovered Lake Deathbutt, and I think we're all a little bit better for this discovery. We are. Lake Deathbutt is the real meaning of Christmas. We've discovered that you can't drive cross country with 60 pounds of pot, even if it's for Christmas. Or at least you should really obey all the traffic laws. Yeah. You should drive fucking perfect if you're going to do that. You can't be listing over out of your lane and shit. And finally, we've learned if you don't burn down a giant straw goat, the world will end. I'm just saying. (laughs) When fire is falling from the sky, all y'all fuckers are going to be like, I should have listened to Tara. I should have gone to the Denver International Airport. I should have known. I warned you. (sighs) All right. Well, that goat was probably a fucking idol of Baphomet. And now we're all going to die. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, everybody.